Hello and welcome to Straight Talk with me, Sifiso Matlang. I'm in the city of Durban in KZN to speak to the outgoing chairperson of the South African Airways, Ms. Dudumieni. A lot has been happening in SAA in the last few months. Appearances on Scopa and the missing billions. This is an exclusive for ANN7. I'm in conversation with Ms. Dudumieni. Mamiene, I welcome you to the show. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Matlangu, uh, and uh, to the listeners and viewers, thank you. You don't do a lot of interviews. Uh, thank you for giving me this exclusive. You are departing from SAA, but to put on the record, were you fired by uh, Mr. Malusi Kikaba, or was it your term to leave? The news broke, and South Africa got the impression that you had been released from office or you had been fired. What really happened? Thank you for that. Indeed, I don't uh, do much of uh, interviews. Uh, it's deliberate. Um, I think uh, it's, it's also important that you, you appear before, because you choose to and when the time is right. And I believe it is time that I speak to you and I speak to um, the viewers about my tenure at SAA. I've come to the end of my term at SAA. Uh, indeed, the news said I was fired. I've finished my term. I've been the chairperson of the board for the past four years. I joined South African Airways in 2009 as a member of the board at the time. And then after that, uh, you remem remember there were huge resignations uh, in December 2012. And then I was asked uh, to act as the chairperson at the time. And then in 2013, June, I was confirmed the chairperson of the board of South African Airways. I do not believe I could have been fired, but I believe that when the term comes to an end, it comes to an end. It depends on which side somebody else looks at it. If uh, it gives someone comfort to say I've been fired, it is okay. And if it gives somebody um, comfort to know the truth. The truth is my term came to an end. Last year, uh, the previous, uh, the former Minister of uh, Finance um, extended my term by one year, which today is the 1st of November. It, it has come to an end. Mamiani, tell me this. What happened to the billions at SAA? Uh, we've always known that SAA has never been in, in good shape. Uh, bailouts, the billions have gone. Some people have, have said uh, SAA is captured. What happened to the billions? You have asked a very broad question, which I might not be able to answer today and finish it in this interview. But I'm prepared to take you through the journey. Um, if you say what happened to the billions at SAA, you must look at the legacy and history of SAA. We come from an SAA that collapsed if you want whose balance sheet uh, was depleted in between 1998 and 2001 under the leadership of the former chairperson Sakima Kozoma as well as um, the former CEO Coleman Andrews. In the past few uh, weeks I shared that in parliament uh, with Scopa what happened to SAA but also I, I do not want to overlook the fact that SAA had never been capitalized. There has been misleading statements about SAA uh, being given bailouts, and I've heard you talk bailouts. I think we need to give some explanation to people. What are bailouts? What is a bailout? If we're talking government guarantees, is that cash? What is a bailout? South African Airways, is given government guarantees and we use that paper it actually comes in a paper we use that paper to go and look for money and basically the state becomes it guarantees the debt that we're going in to enter into therefore there is no cash that has been coming from the government to south african airways sometimes the government could choose to turn that particular bailout or guarantee into an equity um, it's up to the government but Look, South African Airways is a state-owned enterprise. It it's a company that belongs to the government. And therefore, the government does the right thing by guaranteeing South African Airways. But again, 
if you say where are these billions South African Airways had a, a quite a rich balance sheet um, quite a strong balance sheet uh, before um, an expert in aviation so-called uh, by the name of uh, Coleman Andrews came into South African Airways uh, as an expert in aviation to turn the company around. You know the first thing that any business person like myself, um, being a teacher plus a business person who has had uh, a vast experience in serving in, in a number of boards, if, if, if you analyze what um, the aviation expert came to do at SAA, by taking the balance sheet of SAA and destroying it. He took the fleet that we had. You know, in order for you to go out and look for money, the first thing that you look into is the company's financial performance. You look at its balance sheet, you look at what assets it has and stuff like that. The first thing he did, he sold the fleet we had, which was paid up by the way. When he sold it, that recorded as good financial performance, performance on the bottom line of our books because when you sell something, you get cash and then it, it, it is entered into our books as money, it's like profit. But that particular decision was bad then. It is still bad today. There was a minister, there was a board, there were chairpersons, there were oversight structures of parliament and they know this. This was reported by Business Day. I, re I remember reading it in 2001. At the time I was in business. I said, how can we allow this as South African citizens and taxpayers? What happened? We leased those. They leased uh, those aircrafts back because these are the tools for trade. You can't sell your aircrafts because the, this is what you use in order for you to exist. Can it be said that then, Mamien, that uh, Mr. Andrews was used or is used by someone to collapse SAA? Was he used, do you think, as a, as a vacuum to collapse the, the state enterprise? I, I, will, I will remain, um, I won't pronounce on Coleman Andrews, I will con pronounce on the wrong that he did. Whoever that may have used him uh, for the purposes of privatization, as you can hear, there is so much um, noise about the wish for South Africa, uh, South, South, South African Airways to be, to be privatized. You could then, um, in your own calculation, arrive at that particular um, uh, answer. But um, as far as I'm concerned, somebody was supposed to be punished for the wrong, and that was supposed to be as noisy as any other person who have done something wrong by using the state-owned enterprises assets and, and in fact collapsing the company because you maybe just to answer you we are paying three billion rand per annum for those uh, leases and 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 ask me who are those people that we lease who are the lessors who are we leasing throughout from? your throughout your tenure at SAA uh, many have called you a friend of President Jacob Zuma, a proxy of, of the president. I, I'm, I'm reminded of an event when in parliament, the EFF was very vocal saying, uh, Zuma. are you used by the president? Are you the president's proxy? Uh, I'm glad you're asking me this question. Uh, and I'm hoping that you are not one of those that believe in uh, something that is written somewhere by the liberal media that is forever attacking us. Um, at South African Airways, there is no Zuma, um, if with respect, the president has got no interest at uh, South African Airways. Perhaps one can boldly say, we have commissioned forensic investigations into all the looting that has happened at South African Airways. I haven't seen any Gupta or any President Zuma's um, name or company and uh, I can never be a proxy for anyone. And uh, if I was a proxy for someone, I wouldn't have commissioned these uh, investigations. These are forensic investigation reports, uh, sorry, um, 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 forensic investigations that have been commissioned under my leadership. I wouldn't have done that if um, my hand was somewhere in the cookie jar. But I'm prepared to tell you who is mentioned in those reports in terms of 
who is actually looting at South African Airways. These are top brass of this country, um, top people that we can't touch, but they are looting there and they are, they are very safe and protected. I hear the person, the, name, for the, the name of the person. For the information of my, my viewers, uh, maybe give me the top five of the, the individuals who are looting SAA. I, I will come into that, but I just want, you mentioned that somebody calls me to do Zilemi and Izuma. I have dealt with that honorable member so that he can remain honorable when he mentioned that I am a Dudu Mieni Zuma. I am a Mame Mela Mieni and I've got three children, grown-up children. Uh, we, we are leaders in our own rights. We are respected leaders somewhere. But um, sometimes when you maybe I can refer you to, to um, the assistant professor uh, Cynthia Bozas, Boas, sorry, in, in Sonoma University in the, in the US, who continues saying the issue of fear mongering and uh, causing, causing panic and pain uh, by continuously lambasting, vilifying people is not something that is happening in South Africa only, or it's only uh, based on Tutumi and yet South African Airways, but it's something that happens everywhere in many countries. Journalists are being used to do that, and some members that are panicking as well, worried about what could transpire. All these things came about when I started talking about transformation at South African Airways. When I started, started talking transformation, those people that were worried about losing what they are benefiting from South African Airways um, are the ones who started creating those stories. But there is one thing that is interesting. The person who was a chairperson of Mango, who is actually a, a founding chairperson of Mango, um, I don't know if you want to guess his name, but he is the one who is selling the tickets of South African Airways and Mango. Secondly, he's part of the Lesos. Um, through Macquarie Bank, that is Christo Visse, the well-known, respected businessman. Um, so according to yeah. you, who are the four people, uh, or five people, who are looting uh, the state-owned enterprise? I can see you want me, you want to put me we into need, We need some names because, um, you know, SAA belongs to us, and I think South Africans have the right to know. I think what you need to do, I can give you the names of the companies, uh, it is the job of anyone who wants to write and a journal, journalists that are not lazy to do proper research to say who is Bidvest yeah. and uh, who is part of Bidvest. Is there a minister somewhere? Is there anyone who is linked to Bidvest? It's not just about Bidvest only. Various other companies who are shareholders to the banks. That's why SAA can't look elsewhere for funding, for bailouts, because when we introduced the debt restructuring of South African Airways, we decided that let's make it a, a very um, um, uh, black-owned company that could assist us with the restructuring. I mean, highly competent, highly qualified, crisp, young, young South Africans that we pride ourselves with. The owner is a Mashangu, by the way, uh, I've never met him, but I know of him from BNP Capital, who wanted to do the debt restructuring for South African Airways. The reason why I was so vilified about that is that the shareholder being National Treasury had given us the name of the, the company that is, uh, was supposed to do the debt restructuring for South African Airways. That company is called Seacrest. Now, Seacrest, BNP Capital, why didn't they do the joint venturing if we are serious about radical economic transformation? And I was vilified. And it was coined as though I'm going to benefit from BNP Capital. I don't want to benefit from anywhere. And as a teacher, as you know, I, I was a successful businesswoman. And I ran um, award-winning businesses and therefore I'm not keen into venturing into any business but I'm very keen in ensuring that we transform South African Airways. I was keen, I'm still keen and I'm hoping that the incoming board will be as keen as I am to make sure that the 24 billion uh, does also find its way in bringing your, your women, uh, youth 
um, as well as military veterans that paved our way uh, to be where we are today, that fought for the liberation of this country. We are here where we are. We are here because of certain people that yeah. sacrificed their lives. And for me, it, it, it becomes very painful uh, to know that some of them are struggling. We are on highway if you want, but they are not. Th this highway was no prepared either. by them by hand, but they are not part party to what the benefits of this uh, democratic government uh, of ours is. Namiani, talk to me about your relationship with the former minister, uh, Mr. Pravin Gordon. I note your, your comments at Scopa, uh, which uh, made me believe there was animosity between you and the, the former minister. Please give me the straight talk on that. What happened between you and Mr. Pravin Gordon? Um, I'm going to be, um, <laughs> I'm going to try and be diplomatic about it because tomorrow I'll be um, again seen as this chairperson who fired Nene, according to what the media was saying, and uh, someone that has done so many, so many things, ugly things that never existed. Um, the relationship between me and uh, uh, Pravin never existed, uh, basically, I could say that. It did not exist. Um, if you are a shareholder, um, put it this way, if you are a shareholder representative, you need to have a relationship with the person that you have given some responsibility to run the entity on your behalf because the shareholder representative really relinqu relinquishes his um, responsibility and gives it to the board and uh, there is a relationship which is which is through the shareholder compact which then defines what your kpis are and so on and so forth so um the <laughs> the relationship was quite a tough one um i had to um ensure that i'm managing um, every step I take and how I walked uh, the path. If uh, I remember your comments at Scopa, it's almost as if you were suggesting that Mr. Pravin Godan tried to sabotage you. Could I be right in assuming that's what you meant? Um, in many ways, you are correct. Um, the treatment I got was like that of a, a, like a young girl from a certain community somewhere who knew nothing about what I was doing yet I had facts that I, I I would sit down with him and share with him about the performance of the airline and what the views were in terms of what could actually take the company from from where it was to a better place and in fact back to its glory because all we want and all of us in South Africa I think we want the same a country without its own airline is not is not going to progress in terms of uh, development in terms of uh, supporting all other uh, linked uh, benefits um, such as tourism uh, I can name but a few but um, I, I could tell that there was a, an agenda uh, that he was not sharing with me um, there was an agenda uh, that was meant to be carried out which obviously my 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 view was that there is a shareholder compact uh, that is an agreement between me and him and uh, therefore I needed to do what I needed to do. Um, some, some of, 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 of uh, suggestions that I thought were good for the company, um, like for instance, one of the requirements of an aviation expert in my previous board, just before this board that was um, appointed last year, we had a, a PhD a doctor in aviation who's also a pilot, um, Dr. Tambi. He was in the board. So this thing of saying we needed experts in the board is not true. And uh, it, we better not talk much because it, it pains me to see people that are supposed to be honorable misleading people that can never say you are lying. I'm just concerned about this. If uh, an honourable member, Mr. Gordon, is still a member of parliament, a former minister, uh, misled the public, as you're suggesting, uh, Mamin, what did he intend to benefit? Why would he come against you? 
I understand there are political battles in this country. Uh, he might represent a certain faction uh, of the ruling party. But why would Mr. Provin Gordon uh, back his guns against you? Um, that he can answer um, himself. But what I can say is that the stakes are very high uh, at South African Airways. Um, the public is being told that the company is beyond redemption. It is not true. And uh, I am the only longest serving chairperson, longest serving board member that I can, I can stand and vouch for what I'm telling you. That company can, can be saved. That company does not need to be privatized. The company needs the right people. Uh, the right people with the right skills and it can be saved. I can just show you one classical example. If you pull out of a route and somebody dives for that route and want to uh, take over that route, why would another competing airline benefit from you pulling out of the route? So we, we need to ask questions. It's just that I don't think South Africans were ready for the information that was coming out um, pertaining to South African Airways. I do not think uh, South Africans were ready to, to, to sort of, I think they were overwhelmed to understand certain things that have emerged during my tenure because almost what you are talking about today has been written and twisted, sometimes spinned, by some journalists trying to hide the truth. But the truth can never be hidden. The truth will find its way out and uh, uh, people will be empowered. But with these conversations like this, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that people will start to ask the right questions. Even parliamentarians must not just be satisfied but by what is being given to them. They must ask what is not written on the paper Let or me ask on the this. report. Let me ask this then. Did Mr. Pravin Gordon restrict you from speaking to the media? Of course, why, why do you think uh, I'm only speaking to you today when my tenure ends today, actually? It's the first so of So he told you not to, to speak to reporters and um, journalists and... You, you, that can't be you, legal. You are, you are given a, 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 a communication protocol that communication will be done in this way. Therefore, you won't communicate matters of South African airways um, anyhow and if you are to issue a statement it must be approved by the ministry i mean i remember at some point that if if i wanted to say something to the uh, i mean different to what has been said i needed to write and get a permission to to actually um maybe refute uh, whatever has been said but i decided you know um Sfiso, i have beliefs you just Fight what, what you know you, you, you can fight. Um, don't, 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 don't get into, into um, some controversies and some uh, bitter discussions with people. Just do what you have to do. But also stick to your convictions. Stick to what is true. People will know. People are not stupid. People will know what is, what is fact and what is fiction. So that's, that's my belief. And I think my tenacity has made me to be, to be able to stand all the vilification that I've, I've, I've gone through. 23 years into democracy, uh, one Monday morning, I got a leaked report uh, on my email. It was from SAA. And I don't know if you knew about it. It went viral. 23 years into democracy, black pilots are still paid less than white pilots. How did you allow this? Um, I'm glad that <laughs> you got that report, but I'm worried about the leakages that have been taking place at South African Airways. That report is as a result of uh, this very teacher uh, that is, uh, that is uh, discussing with you today. Um, where I decided, let me commission a, an investigation into really what is going on there. Um, um, what are the benefits of the pilots? Um, why, why are we not transforming the, that pilot space? 
I mean, I've recently traveled uh, to uh, the, the African, one of the African countries. The pilots, they were black in the cockpit, something that we hardly experience in South Africa. Um, if you look at the pilots um, um, in terms of um, numbers, we've got about 754 pilots. Um, don't know if the figures are accurate, but 700 and something. But of that, about 100 and, or 200 are black pilots. So there you are guaranteed that the transformation is going to be very slow. And uh, also to train pilots, it's something that it's very expensive to train pilots. But also what has been worrying me um, as a result of us deciding to commission um, this, this study on pilots was to compare what are the global airlines doing because you've got to benchmark what you're deciding to do based on what the global practices but are. But why were whites still paid more than black pilots? Um, remember, you are saying, you are saying 23 years, but South African Airways was, was established in 1934. So you, you would find that we found certain certain practices uh, that were there but also you know that there are evergreen contracts that they signed those evergreen contracts you can never unbundle them uh, you can't touch those evergreen contracts i've embarked upon my own research a company called aar is owned by a key person at the national treasury a person at national treasury now owns a company doing work with SAA at a very high level. Did this ever meet your attention? Um, it's a matter that is on those forensic um, um, uh, um, uh, reports that we commissioned. Um, it's a matter that uh, the, the incoming board um, will be seized with, obviously. Um, but it worries me that you find a seasoned politician and a minister or deputy minister being able to um, stand up and uh, vilify um, people like the Gupta families, um, the Zuma family, um, but being able to come and benefit for 1.4 billion rand in a state-owned company. But um, that's not for me to, 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 to disclose much about uh, some politicians. Uh, what 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 is is important is is that we discovered why South African Airways loses money, why um, it is in it's in the position at which it is. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Mm, okay, it's good to have you. Thank you. Yeah, we're sadly out of time. Yeah, I uh, aim to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Yeah. And that was the outgoing chairperson of the South African Airways, Ma Dudumieni. Transformation at SAA, Pivotal Agenda. I am Sifiso Mahlangu. This is Straight Talk, an exclusive on ANN7. Only on Channel 405 on DSTV. Please pray for South Africa. That's a wrap from me.